physical science students, and in this video we are going to look at the behavior of waves. Now that we know what waves are, we're going to look at reflection, refraction, diffraction, interference, and resonance. So let's look first at reflection. Reflection, the definition of it is simply when a wave strikes an object and bounces off of it. All waves uh, can be reflected, whether they're sound waves, water waves, light waves, they can be reflected. Here's an example of a light wave being reflected. We have light striking the, the kitten's ear, and that wave is reflected. We also have an example of this light wave being reflected by the mirror itself. So that wave is then reflected into the kitten's eye, and the kitten can see its own reflection in the mirror. What is the law of reflection? Well, according to the law of reflection, the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. What does that mean? That means if we draw a line that is perpendicular to our reflecting surface, that line is called the normal. Normal actually means perpendicular to. So let's say this red line is the normal line. It's perpendicular to our reflecting surface, which is the mirror. The angle of incidence is the angle between that normal line and the, way, the ray coming in. In this case, it would be light, the light ray that is coming in. The reflected ray would be the ray that is leaving. The angle of incidence is the angle in between the, the normal and the incident ray. The angle of reflection is the angle between the normal and the reflected ray. The law of reflection states that these two angles are equal to each other. Always. All waves obey this law, whether they're light waves, sound waves, or water waves. So we've looked at some light waves and how they obey this law of reflection. Sound waves also can do that. And an example of that would be echoes. Um, dolphins use echolocation to determine where objects are in the water. Um, you've all probably experienced an echo. Those are simply sound waves being reflected. So let's look at another uh, phenomenon that is not reflection. This clearly is not reflection that is occurring there. In fact, it appears that there's some bending of light waves going on. And indeed, that's what's happening. Refraction is the bending of a wave caused by a change in speed as it travels from one medium to another. So when a wave is traveling from, say, air to water or water to air, those are different mediums. And light will travel at different speeds in those different mediums. And as it passes from one medium to another, it will bend. And that is called refraction. So in this example over here, we have light, light waves hitting this fish. Uh, those waves are then uh, reflected off the fish. And as they are reflected through the water, they're going to travel from this medium to this medium, air and they travel slower in water than in air. When waves are going from a slower medium to a faster medium, they bend away from the normal. It's the opposite. If they're traveling from a fast medium to a slow medium, they will bend toward the normal. Let's look at this situation, though. Um, because of this refraction, the cat actually is looking down this ray that has been re refra refracted, but it is going into this cat's eye, his brain is going to interpret that as though it did not bend. Um, and the cat will seem to be seeing the fish in this location instead. That's why objects look so strange to us when they're underwater, because that refraction happens. However, our brains interpret it as though light was really traveling in a straight line all along. It's the same reason that this pencil appears to be bent because the light waves coming from the part of the straw or the pencil that is underwater, those light waves are refracted, but my brain is looking at them and interpreting them as though they're traveling in a straight line. The part of the pencil that's above the water um, doesn't have any refraction going on, and indeed those are traveling in a straight line. So it has this appearance of being broken. So when a wave strikes an object, several things can happen. The wave can be reflected, 
the wave could be refracted if the object is transparent and the wave continues to travel on through. A combination of both can happen. Sometimes you've seen that. You can see a reflection in the water, but also you can see through the water as well. Um, there's also another uh, behavior of waves called diffraction. And diffraction is a bending as well, but it is the bending of a wave around an object. And let's take a look at some examples of that. Let's say we have some waves coming in straight right here uh, up to a beach, and there is an object in the way right here. As those waves pass around this object, they will be diffracted. This is an example of diffraction. They are bending around that object. You can see an example of that right here. The waves are coming in at this, uh, in this direction, and they're bending around this sand, this, this gravel right here that's in the way. Here is another example of diffraction through an opening. There are two objects here in the way, and the waves are coming in this, uh, this direction, and they are bending around both of those objects. Here we have bending on this side and bending on this side. All waves, water waves, light waves, sound waves, can be diffracted. And the difference between diffraction and refraction, they're both bending. But in refraction, the wave continues to travel through the object it's striking because the object is transparent. Um, in diffraction, the bending occurs around that object. So when we're talking about diffraction, the amount of diffraction depends on the size of the obstacle or the opening compared to the wavelength. Let's take a look at this example. If we have a really large opening uh, compared to the, the wavelength, the wavelength that would be the difference between these uh, lines, we don't get diffraction. However, if we have a very small opening compared to that wavelength, we get a lot of diffraction happening, and we can have uh, anywhere in between. Here is an example of a wide uh, gap or a wide opening, and um, compared to the wavelength, we, and we can get maybe a small amount of diffraction, and if we narrow that gap here uh, with the same wavelength, we can get more and increased diffraction. It's not just all or nothing. We can get a, a variable amount in between. Here's just an example. If we have a wider uh, gap, and a wider wavelength, we can still get uh, some amount of diffraction. So let's suppose you're standing in the hall um, at your locker and you can hear some sounds in one of the classrooms, but you can't see in that classroom. Why is that? Why can you hear the sound waves, but you can't see into the classroom? And that has to do with the wavelengths. When sound waves travel, sound waves uh, are much, uh, the wavelength of sound waves are much, much longer than the wavelength of light. And so here, if we represent this as maybe this is in the classroom here, the sound waves are coming from the classroom, and when they go through the door, those wave, the wavelengths are large enough that there is diffraction um, as that, as those sound waves exit the classroom. And you can hear if you're over here, say, by your locker, and here's the door, and we have sound coming out of the classroom, you hear those sound waves because they are diffracted around the doorway. Light waves, however, you will not be able to see into the classroom until you get right up to the doorway because light waves are so short and there is no diffraction at all. And for those of you who have ever listened to the radio, diffraction affects radio reception. AM radio waves have longer wavelengths than FM radio waves. And because of that, the longer AM radio waves diffract around obstacles, like buildings and mountains. Um, the FM waves are shorter, they don't diffract as much, and as a result, the AM reception is often better when you're in the mountains or in your place, around places that have a lot of barriers. We've talked about reflection, refraction, and diffraction. Now let's look at one last uh, behavior of waves, and that is interference. Interference is just two or more waves overlapping and combining to form a new wave. You can see some examples right here in the patterns between these waves of water. So when we talk about interference, we can have two types of interference, constructive interference or destructive interference. Constructive interference is when waves add together. We have the 
uh, crest and another crest making an even larger crest and we have the trough and the trough of another wave making an even uh, deeper trough. The amplitude is even greater for that. Uh, destructive interference is when waves subtract from each other. So we have a uh, crest and a trough that are uh, creating, uh, a, a, they're subtracting. We have this one sub, uh, and you subtract the amplitude of this from it. You get somewhere in the middle and they can be a little offset from each other. They don't have to be exactly, but when, anytime we have destructive interference, we have uh, the amplitudes are being subtracted from each other, so we get something less. We can have them completely negate each other. If we have a wave that is completely out of sync with another wave, we can get destructive interference such that no wave is seen whatsoever. And if you look at this diagram, this is showing where exactly, uh, if, the, if the peak is here and the trough would be represented by the dotted line in this, in this type of pattern, uh, you can see where the constructive interference is and where the destructive interference is uh, when those waves interfere with each other. And that brings us to this idea of standing waves. Standing waves are a special type of wave pattern that form when waves interfere with each other, when waves equal in wavelength and amplitude but traveling in opposite directions continually interfere each other, and it makes the waves that are traveling along look as though they're really standing still. Uh, you can form these. If you stand with a rope and have someone else stand with a very long rope at the other end of that rope, you can form different kinds of standing waves by creating that pattern that vibration pattern, you can form different kinds of standing waves. Create that a little faster and you might get a standing wave that looks like this. This right here would be called the node. The anti-node would be uh, the place where you see the, the standing wave. Um, and the nodes remain in the same place. If you can get three standing waves here, three anti-nodes with two nodes between them, it would look like that. And the wave appears to be standing still, but in fact it's not. It's just a special type of interference. Musical instruments form uh, standing waves. Uh, they produce different standing waves in different ways. A violin produces standing waves. A flute produces standing waves in a column. Um, and a drum also produces standing waves due to the stretched material that's across it. It creates a, different, uh, a special kind of standing wave as well. One more behavior of waves is resonance. If you remember swinging or when you go swinging, you'll notice that you can make the swing go higher by pumping your arms and legs. And you don't have to necessarily pump hard, but timing is really important. And if the timing's off, uh, you can't get the swing to go higher. There's a similar effect that happens with sound waves. Let's say you have a tuning fork that has a natural frequency of 440 hertz. It means that the tuning fork naturally vibrates at 440 hertz when it's struck. Now, if you think about a sound wave that has a frequency of 440, 440 hertz that strikes the tuning fork, that... Uh, will cause the tuning fork to vibrate. That's resonance. Resonance is the process by which an object is made to vibrate by absorbing energy at its natural frequencies. Sometimes resonance can cause an object to absorb a large amount of energy. For example, if glass shatters, um, that is because that object is absorbing enough energy from a very specific frequency of a sound wave and it might even break. Just to recap, reflection, refraction, diffraction, interference, and resonance. Be able to know what each one of those are, how they're similar, how they're different. Here are some advanced ideas. Read through those. Uh, another advanced idea, how fast does light travel in a medium besides air and water? And how does that affect its angle of refraction? And I look forward to seeing what you come up with and we'll see you in class.